Okay, what's up, guys? It's me, DocSampleKings.com, and we're looking at the MPC software here, and I'm going to use Ableton Live. I just got Ableton Live 12, like last week. And so what I want to do now is I want to export stems out of my MPC software and drag them into Ableton Live and see how they work. So I'm going to come to here, and I'm going to play this back. Okay, that's cool enough. Now what I want to do is sort of get these tracks to be separate tracks. My main problem here is that I got them all on one track here, right? So what I want to do is come up to here, edit here, and then we go to track. Now we go to track right here. We're going to go to explode. Okay, and now I explode those tracks out. I'll come to here and you'll see here now every one of these tracks is now, or every one of these sounds is a brand new track. And my main track's still here. But you'll notice one thing here, that main track now is muted. You see it's muted right here. I can play it back now. Good, it's all separate tracks. Now the main track is muted. Now what I want to do next is I want to set them out of stem. So I'll come to here and I want to go to export. And I want to export these as stems, so I'll come back to here. I'm going to go to Audio Mixdown. I get right to here. So my Audio Mixdown set to go here. We're starting here. My last bar is 128. We've got a little, uh, added a little bit of a tail in here, which is going to allow us, in case we have some sort of reverb at the end, to give me some sort of uh, tail. And then here I'm going to explode these tracks out to separate stems rather than just having one big audio. If I was here, it'd be like, okay, we're going to have the main out and just left and right. I come to here and explode the tracks out. I want my file format to be wave. I want to be in a bit depth of 24 and it's 48 hertz in my sample rate. Like that. I'll press export here. And as I do, I've got a folder here called try again too. And then I want to put it in this folder, which is on my desktop. And Confession is going to be the name of this track. And so I just put Confession Wave. And now it's going to take all these tracks and make them into separate files. Let's press Save. And so now it's exporting these tracks. Now that's done. Now I want to just find a folder and then import those files into Ableton Live. So... I'm going to just hide this now. I need to have that. My folder's right here. Try again, of course. I want to check on it before I went to this far of a lesson plan. And we go right to here, and we can see where we are here. I got my tracks and my auto file set to roll here. And I believe I start here. Um, matter of fact, let's open this up so we can see everything here. It's always important to see that. There we go. Okay, so we started with track two, actually, because track one was the track with all the files in one track. That's muted, so now we got track two, which is where we start from right here. And that's good. So now what I want to do now is I'd like to take a look at Ableton, and I want to make sure in Ableton we do one thing. Now, Ableton's known for this warp thing. You can warp anything, right? So I'm going to open up Ableton Live 12 right here. And, of course, this is open here. But I want to go into here, first of all. I want to go over to Settings, which I'll press Command and Comma here on my Mac. And I'm right here in settings, and of course, it's audio, but I want to go to warp. And now, normally inside of Ableton, I'll keep this song, which is auto warp, right? So, yeah. In this case, it's off. I can put it on, but I'm keeping it off. The reason I want to keep it off, I don't want it to warp each of these files individually, and I'll have some weird thing going on here. Now, I want to check also here on the files I have here. I'm going to start with this first file down to here. These other two I don't need. I'm going to take these out of here and just get rid of these. And go to here, and it's going to throw them out. Trash. Perfect. Now I've got my first file here. Not the first file. I'm gonna, oh, no. It's the wrong file. I want, I want this file right here. Okay, get rid of this file here. So I'm making sure what I've got are the files I need. I don't want to keep files I don't need. Okay, good. So here I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got 15 tracks. So I want to make sure I've got 15 tracks here inside of Ableton. Right, we got 15 tracks. So now I want to go here, 
stick right there. Now I can get going here. I got the top, the bottom, perfect. So what I want to do is drag these files into these audio tracks. I'll come to here. I'm going to select the first one here. I'll get the last one there. I held down shift. I'm in the Mac. And now I just want to drag this over here and then press command. So I'll put this here like this. And I press in command. As you can see here, I'm dragging these tracks over here to the beginning. The very beginning right there. Start them all on one. It's right there. And I'll just let go. And all these tracks are going to be the same size in the software. And that's the beauty of not using the warp. Turning warp off, it's perfect. The files go in here. And you also see here, too, what happens is that Ableton Live creates its own little waveform file. You see that? It creates a brand new file. So these files are here. So it's taking these files and converting them into ASDs and Ableton Sound. And you'll see them all get converted here. As they do, the track ends up being right in here. Let's go back to Ableton right here. And let's open this up more. Let's click this right here. Perfect. A little bit more right there. And I can press play. Now, there's also a second way I can actually get files out of an MPC project I'm dealing with. So I want to go to plugins and load MPC as a plugin. So I'm going to find MPC here. We're going to go to the M's. And we get down to the M's here. And I will find the MPC somewhere in here. And there it is, MPC right there. I want to grab this plugin. I'm going to go to this MIDI track right here and put it right there. And so now we're going to wait till it loads in. Now, once it loads in, I'll be able to search the MPC database, which is on my computer, and find out a project I want to bring in here and use for this demonstration. We're going to wait to see what happens when this is done. And then we should see our MPC software come up eventually. And there it is. Perfect. So now what I want to do, I want to load in something I was last using. So I may come to here. I go to file and I want to go to recent. And here we go. Right here. It loads up. Now this is the whole track here. I can also expand this up pretty big, even though it gets just about that big inside of Ableton. But it's the plugin, so I'm happy to have it running. So I'll press play start. Okay, I like this track. I got some tracks muted here. And what I want to do next is I'd like to hear these tracks directly inside of Ableton. So we can see here my MPCs. I can close this window out right here. And now we don't see it. I can pull it back up anytime right here. MPCs right here in the bottom, right? I'm on this track right here. If I go to this track, it's not here. I come to this track, you see it right there. It's right here at the bottom. I'll click on this little wrench tool and it comes back up. Now, what I want to do here, and what we see here, actually, is that NPCs here, we have all channels, and they're all coming in right here. I can record this track down, too, if I want to. No need. Now, what I do want to do is I want to record all the parts out. So, for one, I won't need as many tracks. So, I'll come back up to here somewhere, and I wonder if I can delete this thing. I should be able to delete this track and delete it's gone perfect now i come right to here in audio and i want to make a little audio track here i want to start tracking out these parts because so if i go back to my mpc track right here and i click on here of course i'll see the track but i know something for sure i got sounds here those are just some of the sounds i have in here of course and then right so what I want to do next is I'd like to track these sounds out. And so to do that, I've got to come over here into audio. So here, as far as my audio from, it's from the MPC. This is the post mixer, okay? I want to come to here, and I'd like to send this first sound to 3-4. All right, so if I play this track back, we don't hear that going on here. But what I want to get is the bass drum, which is this drum right here. So I know that's the drum I want to use. And now I selected them. I'll go over to here and close this track window out. I want to come to here on output and I want to assign that an output. So I'm going to assign it to 3-4 because 1 and 2 is already assigned here on the first track. That's my 1 and 2 order here for 
auto right there. All channels, which is one and two here, for my NPC coming into the Ableton Live 12. So now I want to see if that works. I'll solo it. All right, so that's done. I can come to here next. I want to do one more track here. So I come to here. I want to make sure this is going to be from the MPC. I want to make this be, let's see, 5, 6. And I want to make sure it's input here in 5, 6. I want to solo this one now. And then I want to make sure I can find out what that's going to be. My snare drum right here. And that's why we don't hear it. I can leave this out of here and do this right now. Now you can hear it. And so now I want to get this snare drum to be... 5-6, stereo output, 5-6, right there. And now, let's hear that back. So I can do it for all the tracks. So I can do it for all the tracks here. So we said we got, we got about, how many we got here? We have 16 different sounds here. I can go through the whole thing. What I can do too, I can just close this out and just map everything out, right? And I would name each track right up here. I say, okay, this is going to be what? I want to maybe name this. Can we rename this track here? And I'm going to go to rename. So my kick drum. Right? I'll go to here. I can call this my snare. Right? And so on. So I can keep naming these tracks as I come out. I can do one more if I want to, but no need. But what I normally do is I make a template of this idea to make it easier for me to do this. So I will set this whole system up and then I'll save the template and use a template to actually track in so I can continually track in and it's easier. And now what I want to do is create a brand new way of doing this. I have a template already made up. So I'll come to here. I'll say new live set, right? Okay, don't save this. I won't need that. And hopefully I'll just get rid of it. It does. And I want to come here to templates. And I've got templates right here. I've got MPC templates right there. This is my MPC template. I got one for machine too as well and other stuff. And I'll come to here and I go, sure, load this up. And then this template will load up here. Taking its time to load, of course. So it must pull up the MPC software too as well. And then make up all the tracks that needs to be in the template. But once that's done, I will see a template here. Then I got to do is select my track on the MPC software. So now I've got everything there. So now everything is right here. Kind of cool. And now I want to go here to my MPC right here. As you'll see also, it's already been lined up. Right? I come to here. And I want to get to right here. And uh, let me pick the track I want to use. It's the same track? Let me see. Wrong one. <laughs> So I'm going to pull something else out here. I got a different track I want to use here. Let's go to my recents. And here's right here. My recents right here. Now all I have to do in this case is map out everything here inside of MPC. Which means I need to go to my bass drum right here. And I need to go back into here in bass drum. I'm going to close this track out actually. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see this right here. And that bass drum is going to be right there, right? So I got my bass drum lined up. So I can click it right here. That bass drum is going to track by itself. Here's a snare. That's not. So the snare drum is two. I'll come to here. I want to go to five, six. Then I go to my next one here. And this will be seven, eight. The next one here. Be 9, 10. So I'm just making sure I get everything here in order. And then we're going to do 11, 12. 11, 12. 13, 14. 1718. Next one is 1920. And here we go. 21. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. 
24. Twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, and one more here. That one right there. And this would be 31, 32. Now I do have one more track I need to record. So I think I'm gonna record these tracks directly in here. You can also just run it and mix it this way too as well, depending on what you wanna do. Then save this whole template as a song and you can always bring up the same files right the way they are, all configured perfectly. So here, what I want to do essentially here is I want to set up here and record all this stuff, right? So I may come to here, I'll press record here on my Mac, I'll press command. And I'm able to record all these tracks I select to be recorded. And I'll do them all here so we can record them directly into the system. I go to here and I'll scroll back to the beginning again here and get to here, 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 and here, right? And if I want to record them, I can record all this stuff over into the system. And of course, my first track, I'm not going to really record this first track. And this first track is just going to be the audio output that it used to be. But now it's just going to be these digital tracks we're recording in here. And so next what I want to probably do is go to record. And go to here. And I'm recording my tracks directly into Ableton 12. Right from my MPC, and the MPC is just a plug-in. 